Hey guys, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Um, I just asked how you guys were doing. Look, we've got a tail of Princess over here. She's checking out. She's checking out some stuff I've set on the table for later. Um, hey, it's a good day today. You can't tell because I've got the lighting set up kind of okay in here, but it's kind of a gray day out there. Nice and rainy. It has been for the past uh, couple of days, but uh, we need the rain and we need the water, so I'm not really complaining. It's just kind of gray. It's one of those days where I want to gather, I don't have a fireplace, so I want to gather up all my candles and kind of group them together on an, an end table that I have in the other room and light all my candles, pretend like I have a fireplace, snuggle up in something nice warm and cozy like my brickless shawl, and uh, either stitch or knit. Probably knit since I'm feeling the knit bug pretty pretty strong these days. Pretty strong indeed. Mm. It's just a regular Diet Dr. Pepper, my friends. Nothing in it, nothing uh, additional. And although it could use a squirt or two of the, uh, the coconut syrup. That just puts it right over the top. Makes it absolutely delicious. Um, in addition to Princess running around and meowing at me in the background, you might hear my laundry. Um, I started my laundry right before I started the video because let's multitask! Laundry and video. So, with all of that said, and hello everybody, uh, let's get on with the... Progress report. Ah, uh, let's see. I will show you what I got done on Inspiration from Rosewood Manor. I should I should be smarter and remember to unpin it, but I didn't, because why? Anyway, here we go. I have, I'm having a moment of thought. I'm going to move my Dr. Pepper over here so there's no chance of dragging the nice, lovely ivory linen through it. Anyway, uh, last week I had just this little spot uh, left to do. So as you can see, it's nice and stitched. So this is all of page one done, or not page one, page seven. And I have moved into page eight. So this kind of right along this flower here is the dividing line between page eight and nine. So I'm kind of doing page eight and nine together. Uh, which is really easy because there's quite a few flowers and uh, whatnot in that little area. So there is quite a bit of progress on inspiration. Rosewood Manor, like I said. I didn't bring home the, um, the what's it? Oh, the pattern. Didn't bring it home from work. So, pleased with this. Love it. Love it, love it. And now, roll it back up. So, I'm ready to go tomorrow at lunch. Will I have a lunch break tomorrow? No, I won't have a lunch break. No, yes. Yes, tomorrow I will have a lunch break. No, on Wednesday. I didn't stitch it on it today because I did not get a lunch break today as such because I was at the dentist. More on that later. Anyway, so that is that. All packed away, ready to go back to work. All right, so let's look at our, uh, I was working on this at the, uh, the Who's Jacuzits, the, uh, the theater. So today choose joy, keep it simple. Three little words by Lizzie Kate. And I have finished that one up. This guy was finished in about a week and a half, I think. So it turned out super cute. Um, I'm stitching it on a 28 count, I don't know, something or another. Um, blue by Wachelt. I said it right this time, you guys. Wachelt. The L goes after the C, not before the C. So there is that. Looking mighty fine. I'm starting to think, since I'm stitching them all individually, that maybe I would like to sew them into like a wall hanging. So they're just, you know, wall hanging sized, all eight, nine, however many of them there are. And then on, so I finished that on the Friday night show, and then on Saturday, when I'm there doing my thing for 11 hours, this is Be Kind Always, enjoy every moment. Yeah. So, 
didn't take it out of the hoop, although I do need to move the hoop. So I got half of this done. Looking really good. Same fabric count, a 20 count, 28 count, something or another. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. There it is. I'm enjoying these. So it's almost a stitch mania in that I start and finish one every other week on average. Um, but uh, yeah, enjoying it, enjoying it. Let's see, this one needs to go into the uh, the bin o' shame. It goes into the bin o' shame. This needs to go back to the theater. So there you go. Just. Yeah, three little stitchy projects worked on. I didn't work on any stitchy projects here at home, uh, partially because my mind wasn't into it and partially because it's slow season at work, so I have just a skosh more time at work for my lunch break, so I work on it quite a bit more when I'm at work. So I get my fill of cross-stitching while I'm at work, and so when I come home, I wanna do something a little bit different. And I've been working on cleaning out the uh, craft room annex, which is on the other side of that wall, um, turning it back into what could possibly serve as a guest room, but <laughs> I get so many guests, I don't, it doesn't really need to be a guest room, but that's why it is now the craft room annex, but I want to keep it kind of tidy, not like here where it looks like a craft room exploded all over the place that you can't see. The joys of, the joys of filming, am I right? Right? We can be selective about what everybody sees. So that's, Anyway, so those are my cross-stitch works in progress, and huh, I guess I did have a finish. Yay! Me! That's, I love the Lizzie Kate Smalls. You do a stitch and then it's finished. Um, so, there are no cross-stitch acquisitions this week, you guys. But I will show you one of the, uh, the, fun, the fun and nonsense that I got. Because I can't stay away from Etsy. It really is iridescent glass, so it does have kind of a shimmer to it. So this wonderful little uh, pansy um, sun catcher wall hanging thingy. Uh, I love it. I'm not sure which side is the front or the back, seeing as the, uh, the uh, soldering and the seams look about the same from either side. It seems to be a little more shiny. Doesn't super matter. Anyway, so I will hang that up on my wall. Or uh, I need to get a couple of little cook cup hooks that'll go through the drywall and I can screw into the header in the uh, the windows and hang it in my window and always be bright and merry and handsy. So there is that. All right, all the yarns over there. So let's uh, take a minute while I switch stuff around and then we'll look at Oh yarn. I worked on two knitting projects this week. Um, let's do the one that I didn't do very much work on, and that would be my um, hitchhiker scarf. Oh, good grief. Here we go. Is this the right side? That's the proper side for you guys. So I did, let's see, this one was done. So one, two, three, three more um, repeats on the pattern of my hitchhiker shawl. Like I said, I didn't work on it much. I just put a little bit of time into it uh, yesterday. Yesterday. What was yesterday? Oh, yesterday was Mother's Day, was it not? Anyway, um, this is on uh, Miss Babs. Uh, the base is Woodbury. And the uh, color is Hot to Trot. Well, the main pink color is Hot to Trot. This is also a Woodbury, but it was like a little sample. And you can see it's kind of nice and purpley there. If I get too close to the uh, incandescent lamps, it kind of blows out. Anyway, so. There's that. I don't know what that is. It was purple and cute and I had a 10-yard a ten yard sample of it so I just threw it in right there for fun. Because why not? Why not? Bup, bup, bup. So that is all I got done on that. Get in there you guys. Back I say. Back! Oops. Pulled out the uh, tag that tells me what the yarn is. Let's put that back in there. Kind of need that. Kind of need that. Okay, over there. And then the thing that I worked the most on it was the uh, sock head hat. Sock head hat. 
anyway. Pull this out. This is on a yarn from The Archress on Etsy. Um, the colorway is Dancing Pansy. Here we go. Kind of show you that to you. I'm working it on the um, two, two circular needles method. What is that method called? I don't remember. Um, anyway, so you can see down here where I put my stitch marker in. Right down there. That's where I was last week. And as you can see, I worked a lot on this one. I was just really feeling this hat this week. So I just, I went to town on it. And you can see, pull it back here. I'm leaning the wrong way. Let's go like this. Can you see how pretty those colors are? Ah. Uh, it's not coming out super, super amazing, but it's just, trust me, it's gorgeous. I was working on this um, the other day when it was um, Crafty Stitchy Night. The girls were over, and so one of my friends asked, well, is that really for an adult? So I just kind of stretched it out, and I said, yes. Yes, it really is for an adult. So it'll be just, just fine. So that is all my project, my progress on that one really enjoying it. Mom lent me a couple pair of her uh, Haya Haya Sharps. Um, what is it? Okay, so I'm doing them on Haya Haya Sharps on a US... Here, I gotta get my squinty eyes on. Haya Haya Sharp US 2.5 or a 3 millimeter thinking. So anyway, I'm going to town on that. Really enjoying it. Let me tuck my pattern in so I don't squish it when I go like this. Like this. But, I mean, really, right now, but it's super easy. That pattern is uh, free on Ravelry, so you should be able to look it up and just find it without any troubles. And uh, you, too, can create a little hat. It's fun. Okay, next up. The real trouble that I got myself into this week, you guys. Yarnquisitions. Nobody expected the Spanish Yarnquisition. Okay, uh... I wanted to try out one of the little, um, bags that you can put your, uh, like, your cake in and to kind of help keep it, uh, square. So I bought this little... A bento style bag from the Felted Garden on Etsy. And I'm kind of surprised at how small it is. Um, I should get out one of my cakes. Let's get the cake out. Because it doesn't fit. I don't know what I'm supposed to do because this... I mean, I assume most people do center pull, but I do pulls off of the edges. I guess it... I mean kind of fits, but I'm not going to be able to snap my things together. And I don't do a center pull because when you get kind of to the outside, it all kind of collapses in on itself, and then that makes like this huge, awful mess that's just terrible. Terrible, I tell you. So anyway, so I guess it does hold a regular standard size yarn, but you can't. No snapping the top. And I really kind of wanted to know how this is done, so I haven't deconstructed it yet to find the pattern. There's a seam there and a seam there. I suspect it might be a square that's been folded over and, and sewn down in a couple places. I'm sure if I googled real hard I'd find me a pattern. But anyway, so a little sheep um, yarn, yarn ball holder cutie thing. And then also while I was out and about, um, I thought, oh well, I need another um, couple well of things. Come on, brain. Oh, project bags. So I uh, saw this cute, cute little fabric at the shop. Is quilt is quilt knit craft, darling, darling little knitting sheep on a white background. He's cute, so cute. It's tiny, guys. I don't. It on the uh, the web page. The description says it you know will fit a single skein project. Look, look it's a single skein. It barely fits. There's no room for the project, just the skein. You can come take one of the skeins I bought. It kind of barely fits. I don't know how... I don't know how this is supposed to work. I think for my single skein project bags, I want something a little bigger. But maybe that's just because I'm 
used to cross stitch and I like a little extra room in my bags and I don't really want to squish things too much I don't know but darling 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 the quality is excellent no complaints there uh, really cute bag it's uh, lightly interfaced so it's really quite stiff and will stand up straight plus I got random bit of yarn has absolutely no details on what that is I think she hand dies too so anyway let's put that away let's put this away again for like the third time Soup. okay so uh, now let's look at all the wonderful yarn so uh, from Little French Meadow they are a seller over in England. I bought this cute stuff called Purple Rain. They had a pansy uh, colorway, but it was all sold out by the time I got there. But I do love me some purple, and this was adorably, adorably purple. So this is a 75 merino, a 25 nylon. Um, I love the variegation. It's just darling. Wonderful. Yes. It's good stuff. Good stuff. Alright, then up next, also from the uh, Wild World of um, England, this is uh, from Wild Wool, also on Etsy. Um, she uses birds and uh, insects and uh, animal life and stuff for her inspiration. So this is a violet Backed Starling is the name of this, and it was the uh, inspiration, and it is a 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. As you can see, there's a little bit of the black for the Starling, um, some nice purples and pinks. It's really nice. It's also really soft. This is, this is soft too. It's all soft, nice and soft. Tuck that in there before it gets free. Plus, she sent a couple of stitch markers. Um, one couldn't, I uh, also really enjoyed this one with all the lovely purples and blues and pinks all mixed together. And this was the African flower beetle, right? Love that. I don't know what I'll do with it. My problem is I like pretty things and there is a lot, a lot, a lot of pretty things when it comes to yarn. So yeah. Let's see, what is this? Okay, this came from Great Lakes Tweed, also an Etsy seller. The colorway is Pansy Party. So this is, I was looking at Pansy stuff again. It's got a nice rich blue base with um, purple speckles. Lots and lots of fun purple speckles. See that? See that? Wonderful. Yep, really nice. Really enjoying like that color. Um, uh, I think I've got, I've got some ideas, got some ideas. And then the next bunch came from a gal over in Colorado. Um, she is Tippy Tree Yarns. There it goes. I can read it in my viewfinder, so hopefully you can read it in yours. Um, also Superwash Merino. Um, this colorway is Sully. I can, I bet I know, I bet you can guess why. There we go. That's why it would be called Sully. So I love the teals and the purples and it's just soft and just, you know, really rich. Um, I think this might've been one of a kind or either the last one in her shop when I bought it, but it's gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. It's fantastic. Maybe we'll do this with a little bit of this. Do that with a little bit of the other. Anyway, so there's that. And then I also bought um, same base. This is called Stone Ages. And this one was a one of a kind. An ook, ook, A-K, an ook. Anyway, and it is just the most beautiful. Uh, it's browns and warm and earthy. Um, with a little, some orange little speckles here and there. Um... I don't know. I, I really, this one, I, I bought it on a gamble and when it arrived to me, it was, it's just prettier in person than it was in the photos. So I'm really, really pleased with that one. And then the last one that came, um, also from 
tippy tree. I went crazy, you guys. This one is Rocky. Okay, this is the Rockies at Dawn. She's a dyer out of Colorado. Anyway, so this has um, more beautiful purples, more pinks, uh, some darker blues going into the grays. Um, it's just gorgeous. Just gorgeous. Love it so much. Love it, love it, love it. I love it so much that I, yesterday, I ordered another skein of these. So this skein should, another skein of this should be showing up soon. I don't know what I'll do with it, but it was pretty and I said, I need another one. So here it is. I think this is one that she regularly dyes because she has the same Rockies at Dawn on a couple of different bases. So there's this. That's fingering slash sock weight yarn, all of that. Move that over there. We'll keep it out of the way just a little bit. So, yeah, your inquisitions. And there's still uh, a few more things out there in the mail headed our way. Okay, let's do the fun stuff. Let's give our shout outs to the Floobies. All right, we'll start out with Doodlebug Stitcher. Uh, she's been stitching for 25, no, 35 years and uh, gives us the No You Need a Lurker tag as an introduction. Uh, she's got a beautiful finish of a cat and a green smock that she's finished up for her daughter. It's just super cute. Go check that out. Um, Carly, I Stitch What I Want, uh, shows her uh, whips from the Rip Whipocalypse, and uh, she enjoys uh, Lizzie Kate designs, and she was working on a Stiach design, and she just has some really beautiful stitching. And then Cinder House Crafts, she returns to crafts, cross stitching after taking a break in the late 80s. Uh, she's a multi crafter and shows some of our fun Halloween stitches. Uh, she's also a knitter and knits and not knits, but she also sews some project bags, so I may have bought a project bag from her because I liked I liked the fabric. I keep stocking I keep stocking Evertote, but I have yet to see a, a, a fabric that I'm absolutely dying to have out of Evertote, so Maybe one day Caroline will make something that I I have to have the fabric. It's all about the fabric. Um, anyway, uh, our next stitcher is Jennifer Swenson something. Jennifer. It's definitely Jennifer, and I can't read my handwriting. But as always, I'll put links to the the um, new stitchers to their channels in the description box below. Uh, she shares with us her Stitch Mania plans, and there are a huge variety of projects. Everything from like a long dog sampler to Lizzie Kate's. I swear there was just something for everyone in her plans. Uh, Give Me Yarn 418. Uh, she's a knitter and she's joining CrossTube and jumps right in with Mania. Uh, so she shares her her plans for Mania. Plus, there's a couple of little doggies for you to look at. Uh, Craft in Korea, she has actually had her floss tube for uh, since January. And here it is May and I'm just finally running into her. So I watched the first one and then the others I'll see, you know, going forward. I... I I don't have time to go back and watch everybody so when I find you that's the start point and we just move forward from there anyway she's a Texan teaching English in Korea uh, she started uh, push I sometimes missed her and she is also a multi crafter and I don't know why I didn't write any more down but because it's been about five days since I watched it I can't remember anything else I'm sorry terrible all right uh, we met Karen Bowen this week. Uh, she starts us off with the Know Your Needle Worker tag, and she is also a multi-crafter. Uh, she's working on some of her own designs, and she is a big Winnie the Pooh fan, so go check her out. And the last stitcher I met uh, was Squishy, Squishy Stitches. Um, she also gives us the Know Your Needle Worker tag. She enjoys large Hade uh, projects. Uh, she's working on a max colored Pokemon themed stitch. Uh, she's working on some of those. Oh, you know the uh, the ladies and the mermaids and the fairies with the thick black outline and then the beautiful, I would say comic book style coloring. You know where it's more block colored. The anyway, I forgot her. So there's one of those in there. There's um, wow, there were so many and I only wrote down the one. But anyway, go check her out. 
She is doing fantastic, beautiful work. So that is that for our our new our, our flubies this week. Well, that's well, that's that. So we'll start in with the random news. Um, let's see. The play went really, really well on Friday and Saturday nights. Um, nothing, nothing really major to speak of. The usual amount of snaps and buttons and zippers and, you know, just the little things and hems that needed to be tacked up and an underarm seam came undone, so that was whip-stitched together. Um, the funniest story of the night comes from, um... One of our uh, ensemble male dancers, um, he's a farmer in some scenes, and then in another scene he is a, a just, you know, a background carnival man. And so his carnival pants are big enough and baggy enough that he can just put them on over his tan um, farmer pants. And since it's meant for a quick change, all that is holding these pants on him, you know, is a, 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 a hook and a bar. So he just whoops him on, he secures the hook and bar, and off he goes to do his dance. And it's really quite fine. Well, in the middle of the uh, one of the shows, second, third, I think it was the third show, the stage manager came down and, and was like, dude, we've got, a, you, we've got a problem. You need to double check your, your costume because it looked like your fly was open while you were out there dancing. And it looked like you were flashing the audience for this entire scene where you're dancing. So we're like, what? So we looked at the pants, and for, for the, you know, there's the hook in the eye up here, and then the placket, and there's nothing to close the placket up to make sure that it is securely, securely fastened. So when he was dancing, the placket was indeed coming open and closed, but he usually wasn't flashing anybody because he's got his second pair of farmer pants on, and then under that he's got, like, a pair of um, bicycle-type, you know, shorts, boxer brief type things that we give to all the men for when they're doing their dancing things and their quick changes and, and stuff. And so, I mean, he's got several layers of clothing on, so he's definitely not flashing the audience. But we kind of had a giggle about that. So that had to be sent up to the costume shop. Can we get another button or something on the fly so it doesn't look like our dancer is flashing the entire audience when he's out there singing and dancing and doing his thing. So... There's our funny story from the uh, the theater this week. Um, it rained. Utah has magical uh, paint on the freeway that disappears when it's rained. So it was kind of a... a uh, it was not a fun commute home from the, uh, the theater on Friday night because it was raining and the paint had disappeared. And most of the people were going 65, except I happened to get behind the one guy doing 45. And it was difficult to get out and around him because he was going so slow and everybody was going so fast that, I mean, it was kind of dangerous. And I'm like, dude, you need to be all the way over to the right, not in one of the middle lanes, if you're going to be going this slow because you are a hazard. You're causing a problem. But whatever. What else? Mother's Day was good. Went over to Mom and Dad's house. Dad cooked steaks. Dad cooked steaks really, really good. Um, I gave Mom... Um, I showed you about three, four videos ago um, the collection of, of yarn that I got that had the purple and then kind of a lighter bluey, uh, tealy purple, and then it went into the bluey teal and then kind of a greener, greener bluey teal. Anyway, I gave her that fade and she absolutely loved it. So, win for me there. Absolutely loved it. Um, she's looking for something to do with that, so that's a win. We looked at patterns on Ravelry and talked knitting and searched for a, uh, a set of Haya Haya Sharp Needles in a package to buy, but it looks like they don't sell the same um, package anymore. Um, like a collection, you know, instead of having to buy your needles individually, she brought bought like a set that went from, I think, three to, to nines or something like that. Um, but it doesn't look like they make that set anymore. They still make the needles, but they don't make that set. So I did not get to buy a pair of needles. Um, today was work a little bit. I think I worked five hours, and then the rest of the day was run around to this doctor and be poked and prodded, and that doctor and be poked and prodded, and give blood to this lab, and they're just going to tell me I have high cholesterol, because everybody in my family has high cholesterol. We've all had high cholesterol since forever. So that's coming. And then I went to the dentist. It was kind of an accident that 
it ended up being doctor day and dentist day because I called my dentist first. Well, new dentist because, you know, you move jobs and you need to get a new dentist because the insurance changes. And then I mean, it's just a pain in the butt to get a new dentist. So I finally got around to calling, you know, this guy who came, you know, really well recommended. And I knew that this there's a cavity back here that occasionally gives me pain, not a lot, but just, you know, every once in a while you get the zing when you drink something really cold. So anyway, so I knew that feeling filling needed to be replaced. So I called them a week ago Monday, made my appointment for today, and, you know, went in and did that. Anyway, but also for my general practitioner, usually she's got like a month waiting list. So last Monday when I made the call to appointment with the dentist. I called them and they're like, oh yeah, we can see you in a week. And I'm like thinking, well, this is weird. Usually it's a whole one month. You gotta wait for the thing. So I just was able to go in today. So it really was doctor day. But uh, this coming up summer, I was hoping for like a summer of fun, you know, summer of crafting, summer of traveling, summer of watching all the sunsets, summer, you know, something fun. No, it's going to be the summer of dentistry is what it's going to be. Because in addition to this uh, filling, which is uh, one of the silver ones that they're all replacing anyway because they can leak, they've got, they're not as good as the technology today, you know, quite, well, let's face it, that's pretty much what it is. That one needs to be replaced. This one needs to be replaced. This one is okay, but will eventually need to be replaced. And this one, my molar is completely cracked. Guess who gets to have a root canal and a crown put on? This girl. So do you know what that means? It's going to be the summer of dentistry, my friends. Yahoo! So I got, you know, they went through everything that needed to be done and they're like, okay, so here's like six different steps, you know, so it's not all done at once and I just walk up and can't eat for like another week or so. No, no, no. It's like all set out, six different steps. You come in and we'll do this and come in and do that. So guess what? Wednesday's root canal day. Woo! I will say I don't mind the dentist. Mostly I find it pretty boring because they're just doing stuff in my mouth and I can't really see. And the sounds are kind of annoying, but I take pain medication really, really good. So for the most part, I don't feel anything. Maybe a little bit of pressure. Maybe, you know, it's just... The dentist has never bothered me, so I'm not afraid. I'm not freaked out. I'm just kind of bummed. I'm just kind of bummed. Summer of dentistry. So anyway, that's... That is all that is going on here. I'm going to do the usual things that I tell you I'm going to do at the end of the movies. At the end of the movie. At the end of a video. Some of these are movie length. I don't think this one is going to be movie length. I'm going to go cook me some dinner. Mm -hmm. I'm going to turn on the computer, start uploading this and doing the little bit of edits and throwing in the the signs and the markers and the this and the that. I didn't even get to sew. I don't think I'm going to get to sew this week got stuff coming up guys I don't think I'll do a month there's chances are slim that there will be a video next Monday I really don't think I think next Monday will be a skip just because of things um is that everything yes thank you everybody who comes back every week and watches this crazy lady do the things um thank you for liking thank you for commenting uh thank you for all your subscribes thank you thank you so much I hope this upcoming week is good to you. I hope that you remember to be good to the people around you, or at least nice. Or if you can't be nice, don't bite anybody's heads off. I know, it's hard. It's really hard. I understand. I hope that you get plenty of time in to stitch to your little heart's content. I hope you guys that are doing mania, I hope your mania is mania, mania, maniac. Maniac? Manic? There we go, manic. That's the proper pronunciation. I hope that frog stays far, far away from you. Have a good one, everyone. Hugs and stitches. Bye.